Hello. In this video, we're going to derive the sine law. Now, we're going to, before doing that, we're going to do a problem we are, we're already familiar with. So, you see here that we have triangle QRP, which is a non-right angle triangle, which means I can't apply my primary trig ratios. And what this question is asking me to do is to find P. Now, we've figured out a way to do this already. And what we said we need to do was, by dropping a perpendicular from R to line segment QP and noting that that will intersect at 90 degrees, we've created two right angle triangles. If we add another letter here, let's call this W, we see that tr triangle QRW has both an angle measurement other than the 90 degrees and a length which means I can solve for this height here. And once I've solved for this height here, I can use that height in combination with the 16 millimeters to solve for P. And so let's do that, shall we? So therefore, if I look at 63 degrees as my reference angle, I know that H is the opposite, and 14 millimeters is the hypotenuse. So that means that sine of 63 degrees is equal to the opposite, which is H over 14. And if I rearrange this, I get h is equal to 14 sine 63 degrees. And I can then put that into my calculator. And I end up with 2. Point oh, pardon me. My calculator is in radians. Let's try that again. 14 times sine of 63, 12.474. 12 and again, this is approximately equal to. So what I can then do <coughs> is I can solve for P. And if I consider P, I know that H is the opposite, and 16 is the hypotenuse. And therefore, I know that sine of angle P is equal to the opposite, which is the H value, which is 12.474, approximately over 16. And then I can say, therefore, P is equal to the sine inverse of 12.474 over 16. And there P, therefore, P is approximately equal to 51.226, well, let's say 51.23 degrees. Let's not forget that degree symbol. Now one thing to note here is that <clears throat> by rounding at this step right here, we've introduced some error. So if I wanted to get a more exact value, I could say P is equal to sine inverse, and I can actually take 14 times sine of 63 degrees, all over 16. And now if I substitute that in, I get 51.23 degrees. So the error there is nothing significant. So this is a process we can always follow if we were to get a problem like this. But what happens is as people do problems a number of times, they want to come up with what's called a general representation and hopefully find a formula about that. So let's draw out a triangle here, which is similar, but has no values on it. So this is a non-right angle triangle. And we're, going to call, we're going to call this triangle ABC. And I'm going to name the sides at small a, small b, small c. And I'm going to go through the same process now. So the idea is that I might have any piece of information about this triangle, and I want to solve for one of the angles, but I don't want to actually calculate the height, which would be the, the value of that line segment here. So let's put an h here, and what we can start with is we know that sine of a is equal to h over c, so therefore h can be written as c sine a, and we also know that if we go look at this triangle here, 
we know that sine of c is equal to h over a. So h is equal to a sine c. And the observation we want to make at this point is that this h is the same in both cases. So therefore, what we can say is that c sine a is equal to a sine c. And what, what we often do at this point is rewrite it in this format. We write it, we divide both sides by sine a. So I'm going to divide this by sine a. I'm going to divide this by sine a. So those cancel out, so I end up with c is equal to a sine c over sine a. And then I'll multiply both sides by 1 over sine c. And I get this beautiful relationship, these sine c's cancel, which is c over sine c is equal to a over sine a. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is what's called this is the sine law, pardon me. And the sine law states that the ratio of the length to the sine of its angle for all sides of the triangle are equivalent. And we could go through and prove this again, but what you would see is that a over sine a is equal to b over sine b, which is equal to c over sine c. So given the right amount of information in a triangle, we now have a law that we can apply to non-right angle triangles to solve some information. In the next video, we'll look at a couple examples of how this is applied.